Greetings, everyone. It's Closer Look time again. So this time around, as uh, most of you will know if you watch my updates, I recently picked up the Scream Factory Steelbook edition of John Carpenter's The Thing. So I thought, hey, I think it's long overdue, uh, long, long past time to take a look at all the various editions that I've picked up over the years. So we're going to look at The Thing, The Thing, The Thing, The Thing, The Thing, and The Thing. And not that one. Today, on a closer look on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. Yeah, we're not going to talk about the 2010 one because uh, I'm tired of talking about it. We're just going to talk about the 1982 one. So, I first heard about the 1982 movie when I was sitting in a dentist's office. Uh, it was a friend of my dad's who was a dentist, and we would just you know go and visit and say hey. And I was flipping through a magazine, and I saw some pictures uh, of the thing. And uh, it was just an article about it, and I read a little bit about it, and I was like, wow, that sounds really scary and stuff. But of course, I was 10 years old at the time, so obviously could not go and see it in the theater. I mean, this was the year, this was 1982. This was a huge year for genre fans. We got The Thing, we got Tron, we got The Dark Crystal, we got um, Poltergeist, and of course, E.T. Uh, I mean, it just went on and on and on. There were so many amazing science fiction and fantasy films that came out that year. Uh, it was a great year to be a genre fan. Just a banner year for, for geeks, you know. Uh, great stuff. So the thing, sadly, got kind of buried by everything else. In particular, uh, they kind of say that it got buried by E.T. People were kind of in the mindset of a friendly alien coming to visit. And, well, the, the thing is anything but friendly. And uh, it just didn't resonate very much with people at the time. And uh, the critics kind of panned it and... Um, very unfairly, honestly, because since then, it's been, you know, it, it's become this huge cult hit, uh, thanks to home video and so forth, and it has a massive fan base, and it is largely recognized now as a modern classic of science fiction horror, and rightly so. I mean, it's essentially John Carpenter's 12 Angry Men, but it's 12 Angry Men and a shape-shifting monster from space. You know, it's just fantastic. I, I love everything about this movie. I've talked about it in numerous videos in the past. In fact, I have a playlist called All Things About The Thing, which is every video I've ever done about anything even remotely related to The Thing. So um, be sure to check that out. I'll include a link in the description for you. And uh, needless to say, this video will be going on there. So yeah, so I thought it was high time we took a look at all the various editions that I've got, why I have so many different editions other than just being obsessed with the film. And um, yeah, let's check them out. Let's head on down to the black box. The Thing. So I've owned The Thing on a variety of home video formats over the years. The earliest version I ever got was this one on Laserdisc. Now, this was just a bare-bones, widescreen, letterbox, laserdisc. I think it had the trailer with it, and that was it as far as extras went. But it was a bit of a thrill for me because it was the first time I'd ever seen the movie in widescreen. Prior to that, the only version I'd ever really seen was a, an old fuzzy VHS recording that my mom had made off of pay TV, and that was kind of the one I watched over and over again. So it was great just to be able to see it in widescreen and finally see all of the image that I'd been missing all this time. So of course, it was filmed in CinemaScope, so when you're looking at the full screen version, you're missing darn near half the picture. And with the thing, with all the you know extreme close-ups of the creatures and whatnot, uh, in the full screen version, half the time you can't even tell what the heck you're looking at a lot of the time. But So it really benefited from the widescreen upgrade. Then a few years later, we got this edition, which was the Signature Collection Edition. And boy, I could not wait to upgrade to this bad boy. Because not only did we once again get the movie in widescreen, but this time it also included a commentary track with Kurt Russell and John Carpenter. 
talking about the making of the movie and reminiscing and telling stories and just it, just generally it's a really fun commentary that uh, is an absolute blast to listen to but not only that but it also included an 80 minute long making of documentary featuring interviews with principal cast and crew and all kinds of behind the scenes information tons of stuff from rob botin who did most of the creatures in the in the film and um, it was just amazing. Like, I'd never seen a, a behind-the-scenes documentary that extensive before. So for the longest time, it was always kind of a big mystery and kind of magical in a way um, as to how they made this movie. And to actually finally see these secrets revealed was amazing. It's just a terrific documentary. And then in addition to that, there's all kinds of archival stuff and deleted scenes and unused footage and just bits and pieces of stuff all over the place. It was an absolute treasure trove of material and the extras package that was in this laserdisc edition basically became the standard extras package for pretty much every video release of the thing for years afterwards and in fact a lot of the current releases still include a lot of the stuff from this edition so not long after that laserdisc edition they released a dvd edition which had all of the exact same content it's literally the signature collection edition on a dvd now while it was nice to have all of that content in one place uh, some fans were a little disappointed that it didn't really take full advantage of the DVD format because it was still the 4x3 letterboxed widescreen and not anamorphic widescreen to take full advantage of the features of DVD. So a few years later, they released this version. And at long last, we had the thing in anamorphic widescreen. So once again, all the same content that was on the Signature Edition and the subsequent DVD release. The only difference being, well, the cover art's different, and we finally had the movie in anamorphic widescreen. Now, I should mention, this is actually the Keep Case re-release edition of this, of, of this version. Um, I used to have the original release, which was actually in a really cool plastic slipcase, uh, and then the disc itself was on a, a little digipack inside. And the plastic slipcase was clear, it was kind of opaque, and it had clear portions that the artwork on the, the um, digipack would show through. So when you slid it out, you would actually see the full face of the person underneath, and then you'd have the uh, sort of opaque and transparent parts of the artwork on the plastic case. It was pretty cool. I liked it. Anyway, I sold it because, of course, I wanted to get the movie on Blu-ray. So I thought, oh, yeah, the Blu-ray will be a straightforward upgrade. And then, well, you may recall a rant video I did many, many years ago where I talked about all the problems with the Blu-ray release. We'll get to that in a minute. Speaking of problems with the Blu-ray release and why I went out and reacquired this DVD, remember that wonderful commentary track I was talking about? Yeah. Well, that's included here on the DVD in its original, uncut, uncensored form. Why I say uncensored is because every single Blu-ray release that has come out since has an altered, re-edited, and censored version of the commentary track. In fact, the changes are so extensive that I will include a link in the description to an article that a fan put together where he actually went through, minute by minute, the entire commentary from the DVD and compared it and took note of all the changes that were made for the Blu-ray edition. He found no less than 49 changes, either omissions, censorship, or completely different takes of the commentary so it's really crazy just how much was changed so if you want the original uncut uncensored commentary track get the dvd and get it soon before they don't have it available anymore and go with the alternate commentary so this has everything that was on the previous releases um you know fairly nice uh disc art there no inserts or anything like that but, uh, but a very nice addition. I think I got this for like five bucks, brand new factory sealed, so it was not an expensive reacquisition. The first ever high definition release of the thing was actually this one on good old HD DVD. Yeah, remember the, uh, the old format war between HD DVD and Blu-ray? Yeah, well, for a while there, Universal was HD DVD exclusive as far as their high def stuff went and they put out this edition on HD DVD. Now, for the longest time, this was actually considered the best high-definition transfer you could get because it was just a straight-up high-def transfer with no DNR, no excessive digital processing or anything like that. So, for a long time, Thing fans, even though they may not have subscribed much to the format, wanted this edition because it was the best one you could get. 
So a few years later, after the Format War, Universal finally started putting their stuff out on Blu-ray. So we got the thing on Blu-ray. Now, I was very excited about this. I thought, ah, oh, finally, we can get the thing in high def at long last. However, they made some changes to this. Now, I don't know about the commentary track on the HD DVD, if it's the censored one or not, but I can guarantee you this one is the censored one. Not only that, but the transfer is full of DNR and, and post-processing and edge enhancement and sharpening and... What the hell were you thinking? Then not only that, but the extras. Oh, yeah, it more or less has all of the extras that were on the old DVD and Laserdisc editions, but just, like, manipulated in ways that don't make sense. So remember that wonderful 80-minute documentary I was talking about? Yeah, they have it on here as a picture-in-picture -picture feature that doesn't even include the entire documentary. So the only way you can watch the documentary is by watching it as a picture-in-picture -picture feature during the movie, and they've re-edited the whole thing to make what they're talking about in the documentary more relevant to what's on screen. And what the hell? Just give us the damn documentary. So that was kind of annoying. And, uh, and I don't think it included all the extras either. There was other stuff missing. So if we take a look here... There we go. So just fairly, fairly straightforward. I mean, the disc art is fine. I always thought that the thing artwork looked better in the blue Blu-ray case than the uh, maroon HD DVD case. I mean, it's got a very blue motif to it. Anyway, so I found out through the grapevine and just through the internet that apparently the UK release, while it is essentially the same transfer that was on the US release, at least had all of the extras intact. So, one of my very generous viewers sent me the UK version. And on top of that, it was also region free. So, this is pretty much the same. However, the difference is, you can watch the documentary in picture in picture, or you can just watch it on its own. Why didn't they just do that for the US release? Give us the option of either or. Well, apparently they didn't. So, and then in this case, basically exactly the same. Except, uh, you know, of course it has the UK ratings stickers on it and there we go so fast forward to many many years later and scream factory to the rescue at long last we're going to get a properly transferred version of the thing oh my god how many editions have we gone through already now so <laughs> and this isn't even all there was even more editions which i'll give you a quick look at uh in a little bit here so it was announced that Scream Factory was putting out a, a new collector's edition of The Thing, that it would be a whole new 2K transfer from uh, from an interpositive print. And yeah, and then in addition to that, if you pre-ordered, you could get an additional slipcover and a couple of posters of the, the newly commissioned artwork for this release. Kind of cool. Unfortunately, I missed out on the pre-order, so I just ended up getting the regular edition. Honestly, as cool as it is that they, they had these bonuses, I didn't really care much for the uh, pre-order exclusive artwork as much. I actually thought this artwork was a lot nicer. So, I don't know. Whatever. But uh, but here we've got... So this, once again, uh, as most Scream Factory editions, it does have the reversible cover, so you got the original movie poster art there. Always love the simplicity of this. It's just uh, great great poster and uh, an absolute wealth of extras there so very very nice indeed so it includes everything from the uh the the um original dvd and laserdisc releases in addition to that it has another it has a new commentary with uh dean cundy um it's got the original audio commentary with john carpenter and kurt russell it is the censored version though uh, it's got theatrical and teaser trailers, TV spots, radio spots, still gallery. Here, look at the slipcover while I'm reading the back here for you. Uh, new interviews with cast and crew. It has the Terror Takes Shape documentary in full. Um, it's got the Making of the Thing archival documentary from 1982. It's got outtakes. Uh, this was kind of cool. It also includes the network TV broadcast version of the thing, which is kind of a cool rarity. Uh, that version actually has a lot of uh, additional scenes. Basically, I think to make up for the running time for all the gory bits that they cut out. Like, those, any of you who are familiar with the movie will find the network version hilarious at just how much stuff they cut out. And, of course, cutting around the swears or actually just redubbing the swears. One of my favorites being, I don't want to spend this entire winter tied to this flaking couch. Um, classic. But, um, 
but yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Uh, we got three more vintage featurettes, a vintage product reel, uh, which contains a condensed version of the film with alternative alternate footage, uh, behind the scenes footage, an annotated production archive, production art, storyboards, location scouting, and more. So this is a pretty loaded set. Like I gotta say, this is they did a pretty nice job on this. The only issue I had with it was again with the transfer. This time, not DNR to hell, but the color timing had this inexplicable uh, bluish tint over it. Now I get the logic behind it. They're in the Antarctic, and you know the bluish tint is meant to create the sense of cold and and whatnot. But uh, the problem is there's a lot of scenes, and particularly later in the film, where there's a lot of red lighting. And the red lighting came out kind of pink as a result. So when people ask me, how's the transfer on this one? I always say, pink. <laughs> so fast forward to the following year, and we get an announcement from Arrow Video that they're putting out their own edition of the thing. And this time, they're doing a 4K transfer from the original negative. No interpositives for us, motherfuckers. No way. We're going straight back to the original source. So, very, very nice indeed. This uh, was also sent to me by a viewer. This, uh, sadly, is Region B locked. There has not been a, a release over here, likely because Scream Factory has the rights over here, which uh, makes sense. But, uh, but again, this includes an absolute wealth of material. And if we slide this out here, it's in one of their nice hard box cases. Very sturdy. I love these. Um, so we take a look here. I'll just read the contents of the back here for you. So we have ah, quite a wealth of stuff. I swear Arrow is like the criterion of genre films. Um, so brand new 4K restoration from the original negative, supervised and approved by John Carpenter, director of photography Dean Cundy, which is funny because they both supervised the 2K interpositive transfer the year before with Scream Factory as well. Um, it includes stereo 2.0, 4.1, and 5.1 DTS um, HD master audio options, which is pretty cool. Uh, we don't often get the original stereo 2.0 track, but, uh, but on this one we do. Uh, optional, I can't remember if the uh, Scream Factory ones... Yeah, the Scream Factory one only includes the 5.1 track. The Universal releases include only the 5.1 track. The DVD is... It has the rating sticker over it. Hold on, let me just take a look here. Only the Dolby Digital track. Wow. So, so far, the Arrow release is the only one to actually include the original 2.0 stereo track, which is interesting. Um... Let's see here. So it's got uh, optional English subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing. I don't know if the Scream Factory one does. Oh, yeah, no, the Scream Factory one has subtitles as well. And um, then we've got yet another new commentary. This one from podcasters Mike White from The Projection Booth, Patrick Bromley from F This Movie, and El Goro, Talk Without Rhythm. Uh, we've got the classic audio commentary by John Carpenter and Kurt Russell. I don't know if the Arrow version is the uncensored commentary. It really depends, I guess, on what Universal made available to them. I have a feeling it's probably the censored commentary, though, because to my knowledge, the only way to get the uncensored commentary is to go with the one of the DVD editions. Uh, we got Who's Who Goes There in Search of the Thing, an all-new documentary produced by Ballyhoo Motion Pictures, exploring the history of the thing from the original novella to John Carpenter's terrifying science fiction classic, featuring new interviews with cast and crew alongside authors, historians, and critics. 1982, One Amazing Summer, an all-new retrospective documentary produced by Ballyhoo Motion Pictures about the unforgettable films released in the summer of 1982. This is what I've always said, and it's nice to have it kind of validated by a somewhat official source, is that 1982 was an amazing year to be 10 years old and a sci-fi fan there was so many great films that came out that year uh it really was like one of the all-time great years for genre fans uh we got the terror takes shape documentary uh we got let's see no no thing left unsaid the thing 35th anniversary panel filmed at the 2017 texas frightmare weekend featuring director of photography dean cundy and actors tom waits uh thomas waits keith david and wilford brimley 
The Thing, 27,000 Hours, a short film tribute by filmmaker Sean Hogan, who did Little Deaths and The Devil's Business, viewable with optional audio commentary with Hogan and Arrow Video podcast host Sam Ashurst and Dan Martin, newly produced fan featurettes, annotated production archive, outtakes, trailer, and reversible sleeve featuring original and newly commissioned artwork by Gary Pullen. So there you go. You probably want to look at the uh, reversible sleeve here, don't you? So this is the, the new artwork here, obviously. And then, actually, there's some inserts inside. We'll take a look at just a moment. Um, there's quite a lot of pack-in stuff here. Arrow does not skimp on that. And then inside, we actually have the original theatrical poster, which I kept it flipped around this way because I already have that artwork on how many other editions. So I thought, well, let's, in this case, we'll just feature the, the new artwork. So if we take a look here, we actually have some, uh, looks like some lobby card reproductions. Got this lovely, nice silhouette artwork on the back. And then we have these. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit on them for you. There we go. So very nice. I love when they include pack-in stuff like this. So we just flip it around. There we go. Got the... I never really do lobby cards anymore. It was a thing for <laughs> a thing for a very long time. I mean, it dates all the way back to like the 30s. I remember. You know, when I've been doing reviews of, of older movies, like some of the Universal Monsters ones and stuff like that, I've always, uh, you know, in, in, in addition to searching for movie posters, I've often found a lot of scans of lobby cards and stuff. And it's cool because a lot of the times you get sort of production photos and whatnot that you don't see elsewhere. It's pretty interesting. Um, that, that was actually one of the things that was kind of different about the production of the thing was John Carpenter did it. John Carpenter didn't allow any photos to be taken on set and said that any uh, any photos, like publicity photos that would be sent out could only be uh, frames of the actual movie. So what we're seeing here is actual frames from the movie. There isn't a lot of behind-the-scenes uh, pictures from this because uh, John Carpenter just wouldn't allow it. I guess he wanted to kind of maintain the mystery and the mystique and uh, stuff like that. So in addition to that, we have this wonderful book. I'm just going to pull back a bit here that uh, is included. And the book actually contains, well, you can see what it, it contains a couple of uh, essays about the thing. So we got, what is it? Something Wicked This Way Comes and In Defense of John Carpenter's The Thing. Um, I've read this, uh, I've read through this uh, a little while ago. And uh, absolutely fascinating reading. I got to say, some really intelligent uh, essays here about the film. And uh, if you're a fan, it uh, it really does kind of give you a, a little bit more perspective on it that perhaps you hadn't had before. So it's it's quite good. And um, I think the in defense of one is is kind of in response to the fact that it wasn't very well received critically. And then, uh, I don't know, you won't be able to see this too well, but uh, we have essentially a poster. So we've got the, uh, if I pull way back, there you can kind of see it there. So it's basically the movie poster on one side, and then we have the, uh, the new artwork on the other side. So that'd be kind of a nice, nice thing to get framed, I guess, except you'd lose one side of it. So, okay, so just give me a second here, and I'll grab the next edition. So, about a year after the Arrow release, Shout Factory said, Hey, we're doing a special Steelbook edition re-release of the thing. And at first I was like, meh, I'm not really big on these Steelbook re-releases. It just seems like uh, encouraging double dipping and whatnot, you know. But uh, then I found out that this Steelbook re-release not only contains both discs from the previous release... But it also includes this, a third disc, which is the 2017 4K scan from the Arrow release. So I was like, ah, fine, sold. <laughs> and that was that. So I, I had to get that one. But um, because basically, I, I mean, I really wanted to see that transfer, but uh, obviously don't have a, uh, a region free player yet. But, um, so sadly, that means I can't look at any of the extras on that set either. But uh, eventually I will. But So if we open this up here and you just get a full look at the artwork, nice wraparound artwork. And there we go. Kind of blowing the end of the movie there. But, uh, okay. Cool. 
<laughs> One of my chat room regulars uh, pointed out, said, yeah, Show Factory seems to do that a lot with their steelbook releases, is they'll have newly commissioned artwork that shows a scene from the end of the movie. Like, what the hell? But uh, there we go. So just a sort of different uh, discard on here as well. And there's no actual artwork underneath. Oh, there we go. Somebody in this camp ain't what they ain't what he appears to be. There you go. And I now I got to check under here. Is there anything under here? I don't think so. Hold on. So yeah, no, there's nothing there. So uh, yeah, so these two discs here are the same as the two discs that are in the uh, the Scream Factory edition, and. That is that. Now, did I show you the discs there? I can't remember if I showed you the discs, so we'll just take a quick peek here. This is the Scream Factory Edition. Oh, yeah, no, I showed these to you. Yeah, there you go. So that's the that's the Scream Factory Edition with the reversed cover. So, yeah. So, in addition to that, there have been a lot of other editions of the thing over the years, uh, mostly Blu-ray. But let's let's take a little look here. We'll just kind of cycle through them. Well, there's been a bunch of different steelbook editions, and special editions, and limited editions, and box set editions. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. But for the most part, uh, a lot of the additions that you're seeing here were just straight up repackages of existing editions. Like there weren't new transfers or anything like that. It was just, it was all about the packaging, which is why I didn't really jump on any of them. I was basically, like you notice most of the editions I have are, I have them for a reason. You know, I don't just blindly double dip on everything. So, you know, this one I have for the commentary. This one I have because it's all we had at the time. This one I have is because it actually presents the extras properly. This one I have because it was the best transfer available at the time and it has more extras. This one I got because it had a better transfer and new other extras. This one I got was because it has the new transfer that was on this one that I wasn't able to watch due to not having a region free player. So, you know, there's method to the madness here. <laughs> that's a, that's a lot of things that's a lot of things there and uh just to be complete here just to kind of show all the media that i have for the thing i used to actually have the soundtrack cd beautiful uh, alternative score by ennio morricone uh not all of which was used in the movie although interestingly enough a lot of the unused tracks from that score were then used by quentin tarantino in the soundtrack for the hateful eight yeah, so as one who had had the soundtrack to The Thing in one form or another for many, many years, I recognized a lot of the music. I was like, hey, this is from The Thing. This is one of the unused tracks. So that kind of made The Hateful Eight a double treat for me. Um, so I do have the novelization written by novelizer, novelization guy extraordinaire Alan Dean Foster. Um, this is quite an interesting book, actually, if you're familiar with the film. Now, he had not seen the completed film at this time, so he didn't even know how to describe The Thing as to what it looked like so it does leave a lot up to the imagination but funny enough it kind of works <laughs> that way the other the other interesting thing about this is this i believe was adapted from an earlier draft of the screenplay so there's actually some wildly different scenes in the book from what are in the um movie like for example the uh, the dog thing there's like this whole sequence where they're chasing one of the dogs into the wilderness for like a long time and it's this chase they're trying to keep it from getting back to civilization and stuff like that because they know it's infected with the thing and um yeah really cool now even the book even the book has had several different editions take a look at this so we got this version and we got this version and we got the hardcover of this version <laughs> Yeah, there's been a lot of different editions over the years. And then finally, of course, no video about the thing would be complete without mentioning this. There you go. The closest thing we'll probably ever get to a proper sequel. We have the thing on PS2. I found out there was a PC version of this as well, which uh, I might try to track down just to kind of have a high, more or less high def version to play. 
But um, as you know, I really enjoyed the game, uh, especially as a fan of the movie. And um, it was great. Look at this. Back in the days when we actually got proper packaging, eh? Look at this. Even a, a full-color manual, which is falling apart, apparently. But you sure don't see that anymore. Ah, the good old days, eh? You wonder why people like me are so into physical media? Because you get stuff like this. Like, this is this is a full, proper game package here. It's like, now what? You get a PDF with the instructions? That's not the same. I mean, this is nice. It's like nice, sturdy paper, glossy paper. And it says, beautiful. Beautiful. You just don't get stuff like that anymore. Uh, and that's it. That's everything ever about the thing. <sighs> fine. Fine. There's this one, too. There was, I don't know, probably some other editions of it. I don't even care. And there's the extras that are on it. And there's what the discs look like. DVD, Blu-ray. There you go. Anyway, if you want the ultimate editions of the thing, get these ones. Right here. There you go. And there you go. So that's all the things I have of the thing. <laughs> yeah, needless to say... One of my all-time favorite movies, easily. Um, oh, Blade Runner. That was another one from 1982, speaking of favorite movies. How could I forget Blade Runner? I knew I was missing one. Anyway, yeah. Uh, love the thing. Um, I've rewatched it I don't know how many times over the years. It was uh, just fantastic. I first saw it. like I first finally saw the movie when I was 12 years old. Yeah, it was on pay TV, and uh, my parents recorded it, and a friend was over for a sleepover. And um, finally, after two years of wondering what this movie was like, just from those handful of photos I saw in that newspaper article in the dentist's office, I finally saw it, and it blew me away. It scared the shit out of me. I had trouble sleeping that night, and, uh, and it was amazing. It's actually the very first R-rated movie I ever saw. So there's definitely a, a personal significance to me. Um, the first R-rated movie I ever saw in the theater was the, the, the original RoboCop. I was 15 at the time. And um, a friend and I went to see it. But, um, yeah, The Thing was the very first R-rated movie I ever saw and, uh, and remains to this day my all-time favorite science fiction horror movie, right up there with the first two Alien movies. But uh, I'd say if it was a choice between them, I think this one gets a bit of an edge for me just because there's a little more personal significance for me. And, um, and I think it's just such a freaking innovative movie in so many ways. I mean, the effects, uh, such a great cast. It's just fantastic direction by John Carpenter. I mean, especially uh, filming those scenes in such confining places and having to juggle that many characters in a shot at once, but pulling it off beautifully, effortlessly, well, seemingly effortlessly. He makes it look easy. And um, that's why he's such an amazing director. You know, he's just able to pull off shit like that and make it look like it's nothing. You don't even think twice about it. You're just there. You're there with those men in that Arctic research station uh, trying to figure out what's going on and how they're going to survive. And it's just fantastic. It just amazes me every single time. So, yeah, The Thing. I love it. I always have, I always will. Alrighty, that is it for me to you for now, folks. If you want to add any of these to your collection, uh, please consider using my Amazon link. You'll find it in the description down below. Um, they basically give me gift cards every month uh, with whatever I've earned from you guys buying stuff. Um, yeah, so much appreciated. It all goes right back into the show, basically. I just use the gift cards to buy more stuff to do more videos about, so... Um, thank you very much for those of you who have uh, supported me through the Amazon link over the years. Um, yeah, and be sure to join me on Twitch. I stream just about every day. Uh, you can actually watch me making my videos, the, the filming and the, the mess-ups and the editing and everything, and I chat with the viewers as I'm doing everything. We have a good time, so be sure to stop by for that. And, uh, yeah, so big thanks to you for watching. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors, and I'll see you next time. Until then, sayonara.